choosing to accept yourself is not a cop-out. This training teaches you the art of self-acceptance. Self-acceptance, after all, is crucial to personal contentment. If you want to be happy with the life that you have created for yourself, you have to accept yourself. There are no two ways about it. Personal contentment is definitely not going to happen until and unless you accept yourself, warts and all. Unfortunately, this does not come easy for most people. After all, we put up all sorts of barriers against self-acceptance. We don't intentionally put these up. It's not like you wake up one day and you decide to sabotage your personal happiness and your ability to experience joy. Instead, they kind of creep up on you. You pick them up along the way. Oftentimes, you don't know where they came from or what triggered them. Still, there is no getting around the fact that they hold you down and keep you back from fully accepting yourself. Three of the most common reasons we give ourselves for not engaging in self-acceptance involve the following. Accepting yourself is a cop-out. One common mindset we assume about self-acceptance is that it's some sort of cop-out. You're not supposed to accept yourself. You're supposed to strive for a better you. Life is all about striving. It's all about struggling to rise up and become better, moment by moment, day by day. The moment you accept yourself, you're basically copping out. You're giving yourself a reason not to try to improve yourself. It is some sort of feel-good mantra that really doesn't mean much of anything. You are lowering your standards. Another barrier we put up against self-acceptance is the idea that this is an act of lowering the goalpost. Somehow, some way, you can't make it the normal way. You just don't have it in you. So you lower your standards when you accept yourself for who you are. You don't want to be something bigger. You don't want to be something better. So you lower the standards. This is a very toxic barrier against self-acceptance. Who wants to feel that we're not living up to high standards? Who wants to feel that one is constantly aiming low? So, we forget about the idea of self-acceptance. Instead, we hang on to our standards. But they actually end up working against us. You are being weak and caving in. Another common reason people give themselves as to why they cannot accept themselves as they are is the idea of weakness. It's easy to think that there's something romantic and noble about being strong or trying to be strong. It's nice to see yourself fighting against this army of problems in life and just pushing back against all odds. That eventually, after all this struggle, strife, and sacrifice, you will come out on top. This is a nice romantic picture, but life usually doesn't end up that way. Because ultimately, you run out of steam. Ultimately, you lose the battle because you're trying to be something that you're not. In fact, it is a sign of strength when you realize that you are worthy of acceptance. It is a sign of maturity, not some sort of personal defeat or weakness or inadequacy. Self-acceptance means understanding our limits. The truth is the world is limited. I know that's not what you're supposed to say. That's definitely not what you're supposed to believe. We're supposed to think that the world is limitless, that there's a tremendous sense of possibility out there, and we should live our lives with an amazing sense of adventure. Well, that's the idea. But reality is another matter entirely. Not everybody's given the same hand to play. Not everybody has made the right decisions. While it's true that we all start out with the same amount of potential as we live our lives, our decisions narrow that potential. This doesn't mean that you're completely out of opportunities. But this also does not mean that your life always has the same amount of potential as before. You have to understand these limits and work within them. You can push against them. You can choose to transform them. But there are limits to what you can do. Self-acceptance is all about understanding that limits exist and that they can be changed to a certain degree. It is the precise opposite of continuing to believe that you basically have a blank check in life. That's a lottery mindset. You're basically thinking that despite the habits that you picked up along the way, as well as the consequences of the decisions you've made, your chances of producing results are the same as everybody else. That may happen from time to time, kind of like winning the lottery. But it's usually a bad idea to plan your life around winning the lottery. You have to focus on what is probable. This is where understanding our limits comes in. Self-acceptance means choosing your base of strength and competency. I know, by this point, after our discussion regarding understanding limits, it's easy to get depressed. It's easy to get discouraged. Well, the truth can be quite discouraging and depressing at times, but it can also set you free. When you understand that limits do exist and that there is a context to these limits, you can then focus on what you have. You have to understand that having limits is not the same as having nothing to work with. Let's just get that clear. There are people on this planet that have severe physical limitations, no limbs, serious health problems. But despite those limits, they are able to achieve a lot. They're not able to achieve everything that everybody else is able to achieve, but they're able to achieve a lot. How come? Well, they look at their limits and they accept them. And in this process, they accept that they actually have a lot of strength and they can build a certain bedrock of competency. 
And from there, they can continue to build and build and build. What would otherwise look like a very bleak and limited set of prospects actually turn out to be a source of life, light, and happiness. But it all goes back to accepting and understanding your limits and choosing to base your strength and competency on the reality of those limits. The truth, limits can be transcended. The problem with our discussion is that a lot of people start with the end first. That's what they do. They focus on the fact that limits can be transcended. This was true in the past. This is true now and will continue to be true in the future. But you cannot base your self-acceptance on this fact first. This comes last. You have to focus on first overcoming your reasons against self-acceptance. Once you're able to do that, then you have to understand your limits. Then choose to base your strength and competency on the reality of those limits. Then, and only then, can you start thinking about transcending those limits. It's really hard to transcend your limitations when you haven't built a base of strength and competency. Do you see how this works? Stop putting the cart before the horse. How does this work? Well, first, you have to accept your limits now. Next, you have to understand that growth means transcendence. In other words, you understand your limits, you work within them, you master what you can control, then you build up. The next step is to push back against the walls of your comfort zone once you have become competent. The key here is increasing competence. This is not something that happens to you because you willed it. You don't just wake up one day and all of a sudden this amazing competence level falls into your lap. It doesn't work that way. Instead, when you first start with the limitations and become at peace with those limitations, you start to focus on the things you can control. You start mastering them. They turn into your source of strength. You become more and more competent. And once you're able to do this, you can then push against the walls of your comfort zone. The goal is to become mature. Maturity is defined by how far you progressed from your base of strength and competency. In other words, you first understand your limits, and you start there. But your level of maturity is measured by how far you go from that initial understanding to where you end up. Everybody has to come to grips with the fact that they're all limited. We can't have it all, nor can we start with everything. But the moment we understand our limits, we can then start to build a base. Because as we push back against our comfort zone and we figure things out and we connect the dots and we detect patterns, that's when things become possible. We become stronger, more competent. We're able to solve more problems, and people come to us to solve their problems. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.